them quarantine files. I like this hook. You got a book you want to tell us about? Well, let's talk. There's no other place to do it. I want to young cast the craze. Cast the craze. Welcome to Cast the Craze Podcast. I am your host with the most Sam the Crazy Bear. Bear, and I am with. Oh, the music just shot out on me, man. George, the dreamer, Medina. Yo, I can't even hear the beat. Oh, that's What's going on here. I don't know, man. That's what happens when you're working off a phone. Yeah, off a phone. Yes. What's going on with that faulty equipment you have over there? I'm, I'm, I'm chilling like a villain, and my name ain't Bob Dylan. Listen, listen. <laughs> I should be able to hear that beat. You should. Just like I can hear the music of the guests we have going on today. Make Mr. music Serene. where your mouth is. So what's up? What up? What up? What's going How on, George? Doing? How you feeling? I'm doing. I'm feeling. Um, you, got, you got a little. You got a little tilt to the hat. Look at you. Yes, that's it. What's, 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 what's on the top of the hat? I can't see the hat. It's money. Oh, I thought I thought it was I thought it was a C for catch the craze. It's C for see ya. <laughs> <laughs> So what's up, kid? <laughs> what's going on? It's a busy week. It's a busy week. We have um, a guest on. To, we have a musician on the show today. So, yes. all, so all you geeks and nerds and comic fans, guess what? We got music for you. And actually, really good. I, I was listening to it, Serene, um, and I want to get it right. The um, Let's see. Serene weaves together synthesizers, electric guitars, and pianos to create dark hard hitting modern rock and it's pretty dope i'm gonna play a sample for you right now check it out the name of the song is breathe i'm living out a fantasy life is passing front of me it's out of my hands, you see Losing what's in front of me to sit down That's hot. That's hot. I was listening yeah, to no, that. I was, like, I was like, man, this is pretty dope. Um, so, yeah, Serene's going to be on the show today. So that's going to be cool. Um, and before we go into our topic today, uh, I noticed you, know, you got some news, buddy. Indian just did an article or an interview with you. Indian. Yeah, well, uh, okay. So just to give everybody kind of like a, just a, uh, this show is airing June 12th. I always do that because <laughs> it sounds like we're in the moment, but we're not. So the interview yes. would have been about a month old. But yeah, back to the future. Indian, uh, Indian Mag, yeah, Indian Mag, and and our, our buddy who was on the show already, Sebastian Bonet. He, uh, they did a piece. They did a quick piece on uh, on myself and uh, the stuff that I'm working on and my and my uh, my comics and my graphic novels. And yeah, it's on nbn.com if you want to check that out if you haven't already. Like I said, it's been on there for about a month. But yeah, yeah, they uh, they did a really nice uh, little piece on me. Eh. Yeah, just it was fun, man. It was cool. He uh, he uh, hit me up, said, "Hey, George, I want to do a quick article on you." And the funny thing is, Sebastian, I met Sebastian at the uh, at an Indian convention, Indian Con, a few years ago, and right. uh, I, I I totally completely forgot it. That's how we met. It. I actually went up to his table, uh, purchased one of his comics because he also does, you know, or did at the time comic book uh he was putting out a comic book and yeah we went out we, we kind of we kind of vibed and then years later here we are and he did this uh this nice piece and we like i said we had him on the show a couple of weeks ago so yeah it was nice to it, it came full circle but yeah it was uh it was a good time there was, was nothing short about that article i was like because it said it's a quick um uh, chit chat chit chat and i was, was like it. that is the, lo the longest chit chat i've ever seen in my life that was a conversation that was two yeah, guys yeah. at a bar talking for a while. 
Yeah. Because I kept well, scrolling. Like, I'm going down. It, I'm like, yeah, it was like it was like four, <laughs> four, four, four or five. Um, four, Are you trying to poke eight, me in five, the eye? questions. You just try to poke me. No. In the eye. So I, I'm I'm using my phone and something just came up. I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm yes, just like, yeah. Mm. I'm like, oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude. Uh, big shout out to Sebastian Bonet and uh, NBN Con and NBN Um, we also have. I mean, last month we had a a bunch of. You were on on uh, Ray Felix's show. I was on the Bronx what, Heroes what Comic Con live. Yes, and you were on um, Jose. And I was on our, our buddy, yeah, Jose, uh, JD Calderon. If you go to his YouTube channel, JD Calderon, like if you go on YouTube and just search JD, JD Calderon, Calderon, he's got a JD he's got a, a YouTube channel, <laughs> and he had me on the show. Yep, yeah. he's gonna he wants to have you on there, and then uh, Bronx Heroes did. What's their what's their YouTube channel? Bronx Heroes. Bronx Hero Comic Con Live. Okay, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been. Yeah, it's been. A, it was a good month, man. That was, yeah. and, and that actually is a good segue into um, our the quarantine topic for files. the day. The quarantine files on get your meds. Yeah, yeah. So I figured, you know what? Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what we've been doing in this quarantine. You know how we've been be getting busy, and I guess you've been busy with, you know, busy. interviews. I've been busy with interviews. I've been busy with uh, working on uh, on Russ. Uh, promoting, pushing that, pushing Wonder Duck. What are some of the things you've been working on? Earth and I've been working yeah. on saving the world. Uh, so now I've been, oh, wow. I've taken this time um, during the quarantine uh, to really, really, really go after trying to grow uh, our brand, the Cast the Craze, uh, trying to grow the show, uh, really modify, streamline really updating my technical stuff based on the fact that now we're using Zoom rather than being in person. And uh, so I had to adjust a lot of things. So you'll see some things changing on the on the screen. Um, working on I Create Stories and content for the website. Uh, working on um, at the Crazy Intent or Less. Um, just really just trying to hustle and get the word out and, and produce content. So I've just been busy producing content left and right. Um, I have a lot of stuff. What's great about pre-recording a lot of the shows is that we have a library now. And also what was great about the show is that we are booked through almost the end of June. Um, and so, and what's also even great is that we're attracting a lot of a diverse group of guests exactly what cast the craze is supposed to be so cast the craze is really about the craze in the the industry whether it's um music whether it's gaming whether it's cosplay whether it's comics uh, whether it's you know you're an entrepreneur and you try to and you're independent independent business owner uh if you're an indie you're hustling um we're starting to attract that group uh and i'm starting to see a lot of musicians on the instagram page checking us out so I know there's interest. So I'm letting you know, yes, we are here for you. Cast the Crazy is not just about comics. It's about the indie. It's about you hust in your hustle, breaking ground, trying to become mainstream. Um, and uh, we'd love to talk to you about your plight. So I've just been busy. Yeah. No, that's good, man. That's good. I mean, that, and that's what and that's what this stuff actually has, has done for me too. Like this whole quarantine thing. It's about, you know, like you said, it's about the hustle. It's about you know, just creating content, you know, that's the word now, right? Content, creating content and, and pushing it and, and making sure people hear about what you're doing as a, as a creative, right? Because I think a lot of times we kind of let our real lives take us away from the creative side of what we do. And it, it's just human nature. I mean, we got to make money, right? We have yeah. to pay the bills and we have to do that kind of, so it's hard to divide the two things, but now that you're stuck at home and there's really nothing else to do, it's not like there are no distractions. There's no you can't go out to eat. You can't go out to eat to, to the nice restaurant you've been hearing about from your friends. You you can't go to the ball game because there are no sports. There's nothing. You can't go to the you can't go see that play on Broadway that just came out. You know, you, you can't do any of that. So now if you don't have something else to do, either you're bored as heck or you're creative. Yes. And that's I th I think that that's that's been the uh the good thing, I, I definitely feel like I've been, you know, I've been reading and I've been, you know, writing and promoting. So those are the good things, man. Those are the good things. Just a, a few uh, last month, last month, I say last month, but last month uh, I had this big, the big reveal about what's in the box, you know, my whole rush thing. And it's like, 
you know, in there, if you, if you were watching the show, you know, I had the comics, I had the prints, I had the uh, uh, Wonder Duck book in there. But what I did with the prints, and, and I've got a couple here, is I, uh, I framed a couple of these bad boys, and I'm actually going to hang them up. I may even I may even offer them with uh, with frames. So nice. you know, now I've been ordering stuff on uh, on Amazon, getting more stuff, and, and just ideas as to how to push and what what else, how to get the product out to to uh, to the people. I know it's being in quarantine; you can't go to the store, we can't go to the conventions, but you know, we bring it to you guys. That's so, what I miss. You know, the, uh, yeah, a couple of sacrifices had to be made during this quarantine as well, because like, I'm glad that forbidden's done and you're currently lettering it, uh, mm-hmm. as far as in black and white. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to launch a Kickstarter to raise the funds to do it in color mm-hmm. and produce the hardcover edition. Um, the, but because of that, I know that that's done. I've been focusing really on growing this <laughs> show and doing a lot of, uh, homework on the back end and networking online, uh, so I haven't really illustrated anything for duty yet, and I want to finish that. Uh, so that was that's the sacrifice. Uh, just the technology wise, updating. There's a lot of new things that are going on uh, with podcasting and softwares and add-ons that's going to help and make this show even better. Uh, so it's just really making sure that I'm always ahead of the game with how we do it. So because of that, the drawing part took a little back end, uh, and I'm also trying to grow the I create story. So I'm. What's great about it? It's the, it's paying off, so the yeah. traffic is increasing, the 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 subs the I, my, the Twitter account's growing, the Instagram account's growing, the Facebook um, page is growing, and slowly the YouTube um, page is growing. And I think it's because of the consistency, uh, and people are starting to notice. And people from different, you know, I just had a, a marketing company subscribe to Catch the Craze podcast um, the, on YouTube, so people are taking notice, which is great. So the hustle is working. So that's what we were talking about before is the back end grind. And that was on Ray's show when he was talking about it's what people don't see is the, the, the non-luxurious side of it, right? It's, it's the, it's the studying, understanding the coding, you know, the, the designing all of these images that you see, all that stuff. That's the back end, right? This right now is the best part of it. Um, that's the reward, but the hustle on the back end is just fine tuning it. Even the look of the page, you know, I look at, I, I went back and looked at our old, um, shows and I was like, all right, how can I make that better? Well, there's too much content on the screen. How can I minimize, but still maximize the message? Those are the questions I'm constantly asking, right? So the quarantining really helped me to really become a pain in the ass for myself. Right to really scrutinize every single thing that we do, and I'm looking at every image, every button, every this, every that. How can we make it better, better? So when we come out of this quarantine, we're even that much more ahead. Because yeah, look at all these cats that are coming out with podcasts right now. They're chasing. Yeah. No, I mean podcast. I mean you know that's everybody. I mean everybody. now you can you know you got a computer, you got you know you got a, some headphones. Let's do it. You know. Uh, but I think that, it, and like everything, I think that you learn, you, you learn from your peers too, yeah. you know, not every, not everything is just, Oh, I'm going to learn it online. You learn from your peers a bit. Like, again, big shout out to, to Jose JD Calderon, who on his, if you check out his, his podcast, he'll tell you, okay, uh, I'm going to have this show in two days, in mm-hmm. two days, come back and check that out. Right. So we've incorporated that into, mm-hmm. into the show now. So if you look at it now, you know, you'll get an advertisement saying, oh, we're going to have this, this, this guest. Yes. When you hit that link, it goes right to their yes. uh, soon to come interview. In, so, fa- in fact, by Saturday, the next six guests will already be in YouTube um, post dated, you know, advertising when it's going to be available. Uh, see, right. we did that on, on Facebook with the calendar. So Facebook allows yeah. you to do a, an event calendar. So it's already, yeah, it was always yeah. there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but what I like about YouTube um, that you it, it allows you to save that alert, uh, yeah. And then when it's getting ready to launch, it has that countdown, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And that's what I'm saying. Like that's what that's the type of stuff you learn from your, your like you said, like I said, your peers. You know, like they're doing something. They're like, oh, that looks cool. Let's try that. And 
and vice versa. I think that's how it works. That that's the creative process. Right, but know? that's also part of what I was saying because not only that, I'm I'm looking at every podcaster out there, and I'm watching the video content. I'm watching mm-hmm. the message. I'm looking for you know what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Their lighting, yeah. their backdrops. Like I'm looking at everything. So I'm I'm looking at the competitors, the you know the competition, as well as just the information that's out there. Um, because you mm-hmm. learn from the competitors. I told you when I saw that. Yeah, I was like, oh, look at that. I, yeah, I didn't realize I can do that. And I was like, oh, look at that. See, yeah. See, I, I mean, you 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 call them competitors. I'm like, yo, it's I'm not. For me, I'm competing with us. Like I'm, I'm competing with myself to get better. I'm, I use that. I use what I see from others to make myself better. But at this point, I, I, I'm to me, I'm like, yo. And you're doing a great job at, at enhancing it, using what you're using, and that's and, and it works for everybody. It works for everybody. I think that the beauty of, of a show like this, for example, right? And and, and I was watching that interview with with, with uh, Ray, is that you are being watched yeah. in a sense, right? People are watching and people either take what you're doing and say, yo, that inspires me, which Ray was very nice in saying that it, he likes the way we, we don't just talk about what's, what's hot right now. Right. We don't just, dis- we don't just come on here and say, Hey man, watch, you know, season two of Mandalorian's coming out. You know, and, and everybody's talking about that, right. right? Like we don't, so we will sit here and we'll, we'll, you know, I'm, okay, I'm going to watch it when it comes out. Right. If it, I don't know when it comes out. I don't know if it's already out, and I'm talking this, but I haven't seen it. But yet. I'm, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, it, it's being filmed or right. whatever. But what I'm saying is, he said we we're not just doing that. We are actually doing something different in a sense. We're like for that guy who's coming up, who maybe has questions about how the hell do I navigate. We provide that information. Yes. And I think that that, and then at the same time, we also, for example, uh, Serene coming on today independent, you know, mute musician, you know, doing his own thing. We want to put the word out that he's doing that. Yes. So it's all about that. It's all about, you know, paying it forward and saying, Hey, come on the show, promote your stuff. Talk about yourself. Yeah. I mean, and, and you're very sweet with the politics. I'm not that political guy. Right. So I agree with you. I agree I with you. I agree with you with regards to, even if you are a competitor, because you, you we want you on the show as well. The, but for me, I look at it that way because it's those guys out there that fuel my my give me the coal to fuel the engine. Because I'm like, oh, look at that. Oh, and I'm like, all right, how did that happen? Oh, how did he do that? Well, how did he get that effect? You know. But I'm looking at that because it's it, that's what, and I call them competition because that's what drives me. And I've and I, right. you know, it's, right. it's always been from the it's, moment. In, in, it's even you in, personally, it's, cool. it's, yeah, it's, it's your drive. Yeah, yes. it's your drive. Yes. It's not, I'm not being political. That's just that's just the way I feel. Right. You feel differently. That's your drive. For me, it's about yo. Let me see what you're doing. It's not to me. I don't look at it as competition. For you, it is because that's your drive. Yes. That's what may, gets you up in the morning. Okay. Who am I competing against today? Yes. You know what I mean. So that drives you, and that's that's you know that's your drive. That's, it's that's one of those things where like I, I opened the door. And there's like a million zombies outside. That's the competition. That's how I look at it. It's like you're overwhelmed with competition. It's like, oh, you know, where did you start? Right? They're everywhere. Right? So that's for me. It's like, all right. So then it's like, which which has who has the loudest voice? Okay, good. I want to see what they're doing. That's you know, who is the the rising star? What what are they doing? Why are they rising so fast? Who had longevity? Why did they have longevity? So those are the questions I ask myself all the time. It's like trying to understand the science behind um, these groups and their successes. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for me, it's it's a constant education, constant, yeah. and that's and that's where I get I get hungry with knowledge. It's like I was yeah. telling you about even with the equipment, how I realize I learned how to do a specific thing on with my stream deck, and I was like, oh, yeah. I was like a kid in the candy store. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. the stuff that gets me excited. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. No, it, it, and that's that's how, I think that's how you grow too. You know, yeah. like you can't you can't be stagnant. You can't yeah. just say, "Well, I figured it out, and that looks good enough. I think I'm good with that. Let, yeah. let let's roll with that for a while." Nah, well, let, let's make it better. You you know what I mean? Let what you know? How can we make that better? How can we make that more? You know, better to look at. For example, on the eyes, is it too busy? Is it you know? And that's 
And that's what you, you know, you use others to do that because you say, okay, that works. He has 1.5 million followers. He must've been doing something, right? Yes. You know, yes. like, and, and, and sometimes you don't understand it. You know, that's, you know, sometimes you just don't understand the, the allure, right? You're like, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Cause it might not be your cup of tea. But it's working for that, and they really they, they right. found a niche, right? Yes. So it's like yes. understanding, yeah, I might that might not that's not something that I'm into, but what can I take from that success and apply mm-hmm. to what I'm doing, if anything right. at all? Because sometimes you, you just like, well, it's just not my avenue. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna go on this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go over here. So I think yeah. that's those are the things that um that you're constantly having to ask yourself, and it's. It's like, I equate it to like bodybuilding, right? When you first start working out, your goal is to be able to, you know, when you first walk into a gym and you haven't been to the gym ever, you don't want to look at knucklehead, right? So your goal is don't embarrass yourself, right? So mm-hmm. you go there, you get a few, whatever, then then you say, all right, I want to be able to bench 100 pounds, you know, because you don't even know your strength, right? And, you know, it took you, took you about three weeks and you got to 100 pounds. All right, cool, I'm going to get to 110, right? That 100 pounds is not enough anymore. And so I'm 110. It's like when I when I hit 300 on my bench press, I was like, all right, now I want 320, right? I skipped 10. I said, if I could do 300, I could do... That's the mentality. It's like, all right, all right we did this. What's next? And I think it, the moment you stop asking what's next, you're done. Yeah. You know, pack it up. Yeah, no. And, and, that, and that's and going right back to the way we were talking at the beginning. And that's what this time is for, yes. right? Use that time wisely. When right. you're in this quarantine... Get out there, you know, continue your your progression, your process, your 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 progress. I mean, make sure that when you come out of out of this, you come out with whether it's a new book, uh, you know, a, a new podcast, whatever it is you want, new song, you know, whatever it is that you're creating, come out with it. By the time this is done, you should have that. Because yeah. there's no reason not to. Yeah. Because yeah, time is flying. Not. Time is moving fast. Yo, like, time we, is flying. We dude. might think because we we're 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 home. Time is flying. But dude, it's it's June around it's crazy. We're, it's right yes. around the corner. So yes. it's like yes. this year's almost up. Yeah. We're already talking time, about fall. <laughs> I know. By the time this airs, it would have been what? March, April, May. It would have been three months since yes. we would have been in. If we're still inside, if we're still not able to go out, which I don't think we will be able to go out by June 12th. Right. But it would have been three months. So what did you do in those three months? You know, what did you do in those three months where you were stuck inside? You couldn't go out. Ray got four what books done. Do? <laughs> Ray Felix got four books Ray done. Ray Felix, big shout out <laughs> to a, Ray. <laughs> he's a beast. He got four books. Look at Brian Kong. He's constantly posting videos Brian. of him working. You know, it's like yes. you, know, you look at these guys and they're taking advantage of the time. Take advantage of the time. You won't That's get it back. You're be. not going to get it back. That's right. That's right. Yes. Well, so that's I'm the gonna, topic for today, my yes. friend. I'm going to go to commercial, and by the time we're back, we should have our guest on the show. So which commercial we should we pick? We haven't done the basement in a while, so we're going to do the basement. Oh, basement. That was one of our first commercials. Uh, I think the first one was probably coffee. And that was the second commercial. And what's great about the, the studio equipment is that I have everything laid out and I could just plug whichever one uh, we want. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'm working on a couple more. Um, but it's taking me some time. I wish I could call myself. That's the only thing. It's like, you know, I you wish, wish you could what? we were just talking about technology and I just went and upgraded my router to my, to the fastest router Verizon has to offer. Yeah, I got yeah, rid of cable. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's coming on. So there let's go. go. Admit. 
perfect time in. Hello there. Hey, how you doing? Good. Welcome to Cast the Craze. Yeah, thanks for having me on. How's hey. your How's your guys' day been? It's been good, good. man. How you doing? Pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a weird. I feel like at this point in the quarantine, things are just kind of like becoming one huge week. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, days aren't really a thing anymore. You know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. No, it's mm -hmm. true. But uh, I do want to say we got a chance to we played um, the song that you sent us in the beginning of the show. Um, I actually love it. It's it's pretty, oh, thanks, man. It's pretty awesome. Um, you know, my wife was listening to it. And she's like, "Oh, what's that? Did you just buy a new CD?" I was like, "No, this is the guy that's gonna be on the show. It's pretty hot." Um, so it's really good. So tell it. Yeah, I appreciate it. So be, you know, let's tell. I want the audience to know who you are. Um, you know where you're from before we go into what you currently do and your influences. So mm -hmm. who are you? Yeah. Uh, so I'm Zach. I go by Serene. Uh, I'm from Denver, Colorado originally, but moved out to Los Angeles a couple of years ago. Um, and so since then, I've been working as a sound mixer for like film and TV and then just doing music as much as I can. Um, I went to school for music and studied jazz bass for four years um, and then like have just spent the past couple of years trying to figure out like what I like and like figuring out what the sounds I like and what I want to incorporate from. And I'm not even like, I'm not even playing bass anymore. And I've right. spent wow. like 15 years learning how to like play that instrument. Well, um, so I'm hoping I can like bring that in a little bit, but something I've learned since I started producing more is like, if we think about sound as a like spectrum, like you can only hear 20 Hertz, 20,000 Hertz. Right like a bass guitar kind of takes up this huge area in the low end. Um, and I'm starting to like, personally, I just kind of like how synths fill out the area and right. then using guitars as like more of the driving, um, like more of a rhythmic instrument versus bass, which fills out the low end along with fulfilling the bridge between being rhythm and melodies. So yeah, that's kind of uh, what I've been doing the past couple of years. Um, nice. Yeah. Have you always been interested in music, uh, sorry? Yeah, so I started I started playing cello when I was seven. Um, cello, nice. Yeah, and then just like that's that's a good way for me, and my like dad and my parents to connect. I remember going to see Rush, like I've seen them five or eight times with my dad, just every time they'd come touring. Um, yeah. And like growing up in Colorado, like there's a venue called Red Rocks. Yes, and it's this. Uh, I've been there. Amazing. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Nice. I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire there. How was it? Yeah, it was it's amazing. You, you yeah. can't explain it. It's just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember like being 12. And I think like 12 is kind of around the age, like if you're an artist, what you decide, like what you start to get into. Mm. Um, I saw a show there. Me and my dad saw Rush. And there's this huge thunderstorm like over Denver right behind the the show. So we get like this the live music and then like this amazing thunderstorm behind it. I was like... Wow. Oh, this is sick. This is like, that's this awesome. one of the coolest experiences I've had. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like one of the moments that kind of drove me, drove me to this. Right. So just talk about, you grew yeah. up in, in Denver. Uh, yeah. I have family in Denver. I go there three times a year. I couldn't go this year so far because we're locked down. But um, let, talk about your, your experiences as a child and what were your influences then growing up and, you know, how it led up to the current point. Um, I think with Denver... I th so I've been in LA for three years and I think the best way to com compare Denver is to compare it to bigger cities. Right. Um, and so I lived in New, New Jersey for a year in LA for the past three. And something that I like about growing up in Denver, which is a big city, but not, it's not this world famous right. city. Right. Um, is I noticed with kids out here and in New York that it, it kind of feels like the, the goal is weird. Um, just like, especially out here, it's just like how prevalent like social media and everything is, um, like how prevalent the like industry, the film industry, it is kind of, war it seems like it's warping your perception of what matters. Um, right. and so I think in Denver, like growing up in a city, but like smaller, like I was able to like create some good relationships out there and kind of like figure out why I'm doing things versus like, chasing fame or chasing money you know right. um and it's uh i interact like being on sets out here just like with kids that it's like oh you don't have a 
you're like 14 and you like don't have a chance like you're not seeing anything else besides like this this constant chase um right which i think is important but like at the end of the day if your family isn't by you like why are you doing it you know right. um, absolutely and so i think that that helped a ton and then music wise i i grew up on metal and rock um i loved like tools my favorite band of all time um and like perfect circle i just love everything maynard does but i think a big problem with rock now is it sounds dated right. um mm-hmm. like the guitars have been be- been played for 60 years now um and so whenever i hear a rock song it's just it feels like it belongs 20 years ago right um mm-hmm. so that's just that's kind of what I, i'm trying to do is like bring what i love like these like classic or like rock songs from like the, through the 60s to the late 90s um and trying to update it for today with allowing more synthesizers in and just kind of bring more elements from today um and just like uh, some small things it's like with hi-hats like if you really listen to a song today like the hi-hats are just always like moving around this stereo spectrum to give it more width um Mm -hmm. and like with rock songs like it mimics a drum um and so just like taking small things like that to instead of mimicking a live band just trying to give the best uh music possible is the goal you know Nice. You, you said, you, uh, sorry. So you said you grew up in uh, in Colorado. Was the move to LA uh, based on the fact that you wanted to get more into like the music scene? Was it to come into like to the TV and and and, and like movie side of uh, of music, or what? What was the decision? How was the? How, how did you make the decision? Um. Yeah, it was a little bit of both. I didn't like. I just graduated from college from CU Denver, um, and I had this degree. I mean, pretty worthless. I could agree in music <laughs> with uh, a focus on bass guitar and recording. Um, so like just work-wise, it's, you can look long-term like at where your life's going in Colorado. And it's like, okay, I can be a like sound guy for a couple of local venues here. I can teach and that's about it. Um, mm-hmm. And so you just kind of have to move to LA or New York. Um, and so the first like year and a half was just grinding, um, making sure I like could pay my bills doing sound mixing um and i remember there's one like i got offered this job in san francisco and i had five hundred dollars in my bank account and i like i took it and it was like a four-day job and it was like going to pay all my bills for the month um so i go go up there like do the job pay for my hotel i stay in the ghetto um and (laughs) oh no oh no uh, so like I could afford a nicer hotel <laughs> um, oh, and every time I leave my, like the, the place to go to work, people would just be asking me for money for drugs. I'm like, dude, I wish I had money for drugs right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, oh man. And I like, I drive back, um, back down to LA and my car breaks down and it's like, I don't know what to do because I like I've needed to wait uh, two weeks for the money for that uh, job and everything Um, and so just like that experience like the first year and a half in LA was tough but it's Mm. like I'm glad that gave me a lot of self-reliance you know Um, yeah and so now with like the coronavirus like this isn't isn't even a big deal you know right right yeah yeah. Yeah, I got this I'm good what what, what was the big what was like the breakthrough job that allowed you to kind of like say all right you know what I'm gonna stay in LA I can do this like what what was that moment um I don't think there it was it wasn't like when this happens I'll know I'll do Mm -hmm. it it was more Mm -hmm. um like I'm either gonna do it or I'm not and if I'm not gonna do it like then I end up back in Colorado and what's my life look back, out back there. And it's just like, mm-hmm. that isn't an option. So it's just like, I'm only going to do it, you know? Um, Good for you. And so, yeah, I think just not, it's not even like a possibility for me to go back. Um, like I'll go back to when I first moved out here, I was working as a delivery driver and I'll like, mm-hmm. I'll do that before I head back, you know? <laughs> Good for you. Um, so you've made the decision. This is it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my music. <laughs> I'm going to either do it or I'm going to go deliver some food or something i'm not gonna i'm not <laughs> exactly. going back i hear you man that that's that's amazing dude that is amazing yeah what what are some of the inspirations for your music like how do you uh you write your songs as well right yeah when we were listening to breathe i, I like the, the lyrics on you so do you, yeah. what is your inspiration for for your music um so when i was 
I think the goal with this project is like when I was 16, um, my mom got diagnosed with stage four breast cancer. Mm. And yeah, thank you. And so I was like, I just got my driver's license and I was driving down to like to a band rehearsal and it just starts pouring rain when I was driving there. And um, I was listening to like 10,000 days by tool and the like two title tracks, 10,000 days, weeks for me. Um, It's about his mom who lost functioning of her body for like she became paralyzed for 30 years like 10,000 days and then passed away um and so it's this like 15 minute like metal epic <laughs> um <laughs> and so like I, I listened to it on the way there and on right before I pull in like the song ends and I just like broke broke down like it was the first time I really cried because of uh what my mom was going through right. and yeah. afterwards it, it felt like the weight was still there um of like my mom having cancer and everything but it was like i wasn't getting crushed by it it was like after you do a ton of squats like you can squat more and that's kind of what it felt like having that right. experience wow. um and so that's the goal is kind of to incorporate like dark undertones but mm-hmm. to allow you to hold them up a little bit better you know um wow. and yeah, it's, I don't, I think that's, uh, like, that's kind of what I'm trying to do. And so if it, like, I know there's a long way to go to like, get that feeling nailed, but, um, mm-hmm. it's, it gives, it's a nice, like a uh, cornerstone to what I want to build my music off of, you know? Yeah. No, no. Well, when I was listening to the song and I don't know if uh, Sam, I don't know if you, you felt this way too. I like the build up, So I like yeah. the way it starts. And then it's just a constant buildup until like, you know, the, the, the big sound hits and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, and you're like into the, now you're into the song and then the lyrics and you're like, so it's, it's, you're definitely, there's layers yeah, thank uh, you. to the music, which I, I really, I really enjoyed. I mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So what got you guys into doing podcasts? Uh, I feel like I've been talking. So well, this is, <laughs> well, this is about you. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this for a long time. We started many, many years ago. We left for a while and uh, we, mm-hmm. we went back into it. So, um, uh, and the, the whole premise behind our podcast, we started out in comics, but it's really about independence, independence yeah. in music, independence yeah. in gaming. So if you're creative and you're, and you're, you're you have aspirations and you're, you're work, you're actually grinding to, mm-hmm. to become, um, or to get your voice heard. Um, th- yeah. we, we try to give that platform, um, to, to that creator. To say, hey, mm-hmm. you know, let's talk about who you are and what you, and hopefully, it it draws more people towards you. Um, yeah. I really, really want to know about your your headspace when you were creating Breathe. How long was that process? Um, you know, what were your highs and lows throughout that process? And at what point did you realize that that was the sound that you na- you 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 landed on the sound that you wanted? Um, yeah, I feel like I mean, it was a couple of year process just in the like just because you can play an instrument well doesn't mean you can write a good song and just because you can produce well doesn't mean you can write a good song and my songwriting abilities definitely have a long way to go but like starting about a year ago I just I said like okay I'm going to write a song and produce it in a week and then just do that over and over again um and I wrote a ton of crap oh my god (laughs) there's so much like just terrible terrible songs on my hard drive and then in breathe like with breathe i wrote it and it was the first time like i showed it to people in la um but my friends are professional producers and they're like oh this isn't like this is cool and i was like hell yeah i got here finally Um, (laughs) so and i think that was the difficult part it's just thinking you can do something and I one of my best friends he's a producer out here and we were having a conversation a couple days ago it's like yeah you when you first started showing me music like I know you can play bass and piano but like I just didn't think you could like write a good song (laughs) and um and then you like just kept working at it and like it got better um and I think that's like it that's the hardest part like today I'm working on different things and it's just if when you have no ideas, like how do you generate new ideas? Um, mm-hmm. And that can be really difficult learning how to work through. Um, 
Yeah. And it's like, I mean, that's part of the, the battle, you know, um, right. is coming up with ways to generate new ideas. Um, and so with breathe, like it felt like the last chorus and the bridge got rewritten probably seven or eight times. Um, yeah. And it got to the, and then once you get it, it's like, oh, this is right. But getting to that point, like I'm sure with like your, your guys' art, there's a, you know when it's wrong, but you don't know why it's wrong, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so and it's it frustrating. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's <very> frustrating, dude. <laughs> like you're like, and that's when you hit that block. Yeah. You know? What comes first for you? Is it is it the music or is it the lyric? Like do you create the sound first and then you write words to the sound or, does it, or is it vice versa? Yeah, normally it's the music. Um and then normally I'll like write out the whole song and I'll like be singing gibberish for the melodies. Um, okay. And then the lyrics kind of come last. Uh, and so like right now, I, I kind of, I like the idea I've been thinking about like, where do I, ideas come from? Right. Um, and it's like, when you have a good idea, uh, it isn't yours. Like you don't like, like I couldn't tell you what my next good idea is going to be. Um, and so I like the, it's like thinking about ideas as this, uh, like gift, um, or it's like, why am I thinking about this thing? And so like recently I started writing a song about just like going up a mountain and like not stopping, you know? Um, and I like to, I feel like I've had that experience, like moving out to LA and everything, but like, I want to give it some more presence by yeah. like, there's a hike out here and I just want to like go up and down it for a day and just like, mm -hmm. see where's the point like that I want to stop exactly. Right. Um, gotcha. And I think so with breathe like that core experience was uh, like a year ago, I was watching a TV show and this, um, I re like, it was my favorite show in a high school community. And mm -hmm. I had like, I realized like, Oh, that was 10 years ago. And then I like kind of just realized how much has changed over 10 years. And like this, yeah. uh, it's like, I'm really happy with my life, but it's like still just, it's moving. Like right. it, it doesn't <laughs> stop, you know, it, get, it goes yeah, faster yeah. every year. It feels yes. like, you know, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Dude. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, guys, guys, yeah, no, so you, know, you, you talked about, <clears throat> hitting those points where you started questioning yourself when you were doing, re you know, version after version or, yeah. um, how did you fight through that? What was it that allowed you to just say, you know what, I have to make it work, but where did you pull that energy from? Um, I think, uh, I'm, grew up swimming, um, which is like a weird sport to do, but I'm like, was not coordinated at all. Um, so I couldn't do any other sport <laughs> and like to swim. It's just, uh, it's pretty grueling in the sense, like you're going back and forth watching a black line for two hours. And then you do that for like four hours a day. Um, and so like in high school, like I was really into that and was able to sw swim out of D one school. Um, and just like having that perspective of like, I'm not athletic, but I was able to get good enough to do this in college. Like, it's like, oh, even if I don't have this skill set yet, if I just keep going, eventually right. I'll mm -hmm. see progress. Um, that's awesome. And that's kind of like been a way I've approached, that's how I approach a lot of things, especially in LA where there's just a ton of incredibly talented musicians. And then like, you just kind of have to put your head down. It's like, this is what I'm doing today. Um, today I'm going right. to write for four hours. And mm. then after that I can do whatever I want. But like every day I write for this amount of time, you know? Um, right. Wow. And so you've so, learned to discipline yourself to do that. That's, that's incredible, man. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, if you're not talented, you need the, the discipline, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, well, it's repetition. So, I think some, you know, uh, if it, with anything, you have to put into work. I mean, Michael Jordan exactly. didn't become Michael Jordan without the, the constant skirmishes and the uh, running mm -hmm. up and down the court and the constant shooting um, to you know master the craft. So I think with yeah. anything, um, if you don't hone it, 
um, then what's, you're not going to excel. Yeah. And I think there's this idea that art is always fun. Um, mm. And I, I get like, I'm sure with podcasting, there's like a lot of just behind the scenes bullshit that you guys have to deal with. Um, <laughs> We're just talking about that. <laughs> yeah. And so it's uh, like when I talk with friends about like making music, there's a, if they don't do any art, there's kind of this misconception. It's like, oh, you just like put out a song and then it's done. It's like, no, it's like, no, it's grueling. <laughs> you know? and, uh, yeah, no, it um, sounds it. It sounds it. I mean, it's, it's insane. Yeah. How did you come up with your name? How did you come up with Serene? Uh, Where'd the name come from? Just, I like the idea of Serene and Rain. Uh, like Rain oh. kind of feels depressing. And then like, I like the feeling after it rains, like that serenity. Um, and so put those together and then no one on Spotify has the name Serene. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. So yeah. what, what, what's, what's the next step? You, do you have... Are you working towards like an EP? What do you like? What's your process? Yeah. So right now the goal is to release a song every six to eight weeks um, and then have an EP out next year. Uh, yeah. Right now, uh, I don't, I've been learning about albums and that, like the goal, I guess, for an artist is to have like this big album, like a, to be a book or like this big thing. And I've been kind of, I like the idea of singles and EPs a lot more right now. Just, yeah. uh, I learned 10% of listeners on Spotify listen to a full album. Um, yes. So like if one in 10 fans listen to a full album, like why do that? Um, right. But I like the idea of like an EP telling a big story or like a, um, having a couple singles tell the story, you know? Um, and so I think, I'm going to be playing around with like different releases, but it's going to be sustained in like the single and EP world for the most part for the next couple of years, at least. Right. I believe the small bites are a better way of understanding yeah. your audience uh, yeah. and their attraction to your sound um, mm -hmm. because it also gives you that, that additional um, data to be able to adjust or to, um, you know, repeat, you yeah. know, based on what you're getting back from the listener. Mm -hmm. You know, where if you, if, yeah, because if you have a full album, you really don't know. But I think we, you know, where you're doing it by putting out small bites yeah. and, you know, a single at a time gives you a great, um, it helps educate you yeah, on definitely. the consumer. Um, mm -hmm. And you get to see the reaction to your sound and you, you know that, oh, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. You yeah. know, uh, so that's, uh, I, that's a pretty smart approach. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been interesting. Like, I, I'm friends with a lot of, pop producers out here um and my s sound and songs are definitely not pop but the goal is like it's like if i can have 10 percent of people like what i'm doing um mm -hmm. that's a lot of people you know yeah um yeah. and so that's kind of been the focus and like my favorite bands growing up were always like kind of niche but like we're able to find an audience um right and i think uh i like the idea like i've been reading this book and the core idea is like what's your smallest viable market and i think there is a market for rock music um yeah. and so if, i think uh if a lot of more artists figured out like what's the sound they want to do and like what's the goal and then find the market for that that's probably it feels like a good way to chase clout or whatever um versus yeah. like chasing the most popular sound right now right Right. And the good thing no, about your smart, sound dude. is is that you don't have to just be a rock fan to appreciate the sound uh, because there's it, I just think what you've done with it um, speaks to a broad range of people. Um, mm -hmm. You know, George and I, you know, we have similar uh, music interests and different music interests, mm -hmm. and we both appreciated your sound. Uh, yeah. So I think um, there is, I think if you just uh, uh, you just appreciate music as a as a whole. You'll appreciate the song. Yeah, at that yeah. point, I appreciate. I it. think I, I think it was um, it might have been Dr. Dre that said that the most important part of a song is like the first fifteen seconds or something. Mm -hmm. Right? Like when you listen to a song in the first fifteen, if you if it catches you, you're gonna like it. And and I gotta tell you, and I'm not just saying that because you're on a show, but definitely when I first heard those first fifteen, like I was just doing something, and Sam sends me that I do. <laughs> I just got an email about the song, you know, from the uh, from Serene that we're gonna talk about, and I was like, all right, cool. So I was just doing something and I played it and I was like, Ooh, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's cool, man. I like that. You know, it's one of those reactions. So, I, so no, no, definitely. I, I think it's, uh, 
You're doing a, you're doing great, great work, man. Keep it up. Keep it up. Dude, I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, please. Yeah. I was actually looking, um, at, I was actually going to look for George's, uh, text. Uh, <laughs> cause, uh, it, uh, He's actually, it was, it was funny. He goes, whoa, whoa, this is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> you know, it's funny because you'll know, you know, we're, we're, when it, we've had guests on before and yeah. if, if it wasn't our market or our taste, we still spoke to the guests, but this actually mm-hmm. connected. And uh, so I played it like 10 times already. Um, so I'm like, and it's great to listen to when you're working too. You know, it's like you know, because it helps. It's for some reason it it it, it like sparks the creative flow in dude, your brain it, or something. Nah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it's awesome, bro. It really is awesome, dude. I, I really like it. I'm not just saying that. I really did like it. That's awesome. I'm looking man. forward to your next your next single. When do you think that'll be? I mean, I don't want to put any pressure. On you, <laughs> um, <do> you think <laughs> probably around six weeks from now. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, it feels like a song's pretty much done it just needs to be mastered and then um i'm figuring this all out but like with spotify you have to put stuff up like a month ahead um to get on the playlist and everything um Mm. and so i'm figuring out the long-term logistics um where it feels i i'm excited to have more of that external structure you know but uh it's like oh i have to think like two months in advance and just like as an artist i've never done that before right. <laughs> so it's, you know it's so crazy it's like a yeah, changing exactly. it's like a changing industry right like with, yeah with spotify and all that stuff you never had to think about that and now you do you know? yeah. yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> the music industry is like it's it's fucked but <laughs> it's fucked in the best way <laughs> Well, well, just like with anything, that music, man. yeah, I think just like with anything, I think um, the the ones with the most grit are the ones mm-hmm. that'll survive, uh, yeah. Because it's 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 not easy. It's a thankless industry. Um, and it's you know it's a disruptive industry, but it's also competitive as well. Yeah. So, and with that com- competition comes you know mistrust. You know, yes. so I think that's the hardest part. Is like you don't know what the agenda is. And you yeah. don't know who generally has your best interest in mind. So you really have to tread um, with eyes open. Uh, yeah. I think know. living on the East Coast helped me the most with that. Because, yes. like, being yeah. in Denver, yes. just trust yeah. everyone. Like, people are super <laughs> yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> yes. I go out to New Jersey, and I'm getting sworn at every day. <laughs> I'm well, lost in New York City. And someone's, like, walking behind me just screaming, get the fuck out of my way. This is, like hour two in the city <laughs> well you know, it's funny because my wife was from colorado it's and uh, denver funny. and uh when she comes out here you know she's saying hello to everybody i said you can't mm-hmm. talk to everybody <laughs> i said as if people are crazy over here and uh when i went to denver i got people on the highway waving it saying hello i'm like everyone's just like i was like this Dude, is weird different. in new york it's, it's like get out my way i'm gonna run it's you so over yeah. yeah it's so different well, that I, is yeah. hysterical my best friends are from the East Coast now, but like the first month, I was like, I, I don't know how to talk with anyone here. <laughs> and then I just like, I'm like, no, you make fun of everyone all the time. Oh, and like, Jesus. you just find your group. Yeah. How long? How long did you live in the East Coast? Um, I was in New Jersey for nine months. I went to school out there for a year, and then okay. I lived in New York for probably three months. Um, okay. Outside of that, but I, yeah, I'm, I loved it. It was like. Yeah. It's not my pace of life, but it's like one of my pl- favorite places to visit and live live there for a couple months. You know, All good right. for you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. New York is different, man. It's, it's a oh, different it's animal. <laughs> it is. A uh, true story. <laughs> my wife it was when she, we first started dating. Mm-hmm. We're walking down towards um, Port Authority, and she sees a group of guys. She goes, "Oh, look! They're just hanging out." I said, "No, cross the street." She says, "Why?" She says, "I said cross the street." They. It was it was uh, undercover cops arresting a bunch of drug dealers. <laughs> she, thought, she thought people were just <laughs> hanging out. I was hanging like, cross out. the street. I was like, don't you see the guns in their hands? I was like, you crazy. <laughs> She's gonna hate you for that story. Yeah, so. it, it was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that is great. I think everyone should live on the East Coast for like a year at least, because it <laughs> it's uh <laughs> it's a good amount of mistrust. But like, man, the people like. 
on the East Coast, once they have your back, like they, yeah. yes, there's no one else like that, you know. That's true. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. Definitely true. Uh, man, so, man, so where, where can they find your stuff other than Spotify? Do you have a website? Like, how, how can people, like, if they really want to hear your stuff other than Spotify, how, how can they reach out to you? Or yeah, um, I have a website, IamSerene.com, and then just my Instagram, I am Serene. Uh, I have a Facebook page. Um, same i am serene but it's on all streaming platforms probably instagram's the best way to reach out and follow me and see what i'm doing and everything perfect i'll have the link when we, yeah. when we post the show i'll have the link to your website as well and i'll also have it on the on the screen so that they can see it awesome yeah i appreciate it perfect man dude thank you so much for being on the show brother i really appreciate you coming on yeah i appreciate it thanks for having me on yeah so any yeah. final words for the audience before you go <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> listen to my music. Don't don't get sick. <laughs> that, yeah. That's about it. And by the way, what's the name? What's your cat's name? Uh, what's my cat's name? Your cat. The cat. Your cat. Oh, my cat. Yeah. Uh, taters. Taters. <laughs> yeah. Nice. 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 Yeah. I I have a bunch of cats. So. Oh, yeah, nice. So, yeah, yeah. I was like, right, later, guys. You got it, buddy. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks later, for having me. Take care, buddy. Yep. So that was a really, really good show. Awesome, man. I am serene. Yeah, no, good music, brother. I, I really, honestly, when you sent me that stuff, I was like, oh, I, I didn't know what to expect. You never know what to expect. You know what I mean? You're like, all right, let's, let's check this out. Yeah, but, then, well, while we're talking, let's sounds, just, if you didn't hear it the first really time, check it out. And like I was saying, this you can work and listen to this. Like I was, I, I was at the draft table, and I was like, "Wow, this is." But it makes you like the lay. I, I love the way it builds. Yeah. That is pretty sweet. Yeah, nah, that's dope. So if you guys want to check that out, it's I Am Serain, S-E-R-A-I-N. Yes. And the song is Brief. Brief, uh, yes. And it's on all, he said all streaming platforms, right? So you can check it out on, yes. whether you're on, I guess, uh, I mean, this Spotify is a, or Apple It's music. like if you're a really analytical person <clears throat> or you're someone who always gets caught up in thought, um, this is a great, have a nice sip of cognac and sit down and just think <laughs> <laughs> you know you're, you're, you're a philosopher and you you and you're just like you know i wonder uh, what would happen if right. mm -hmm. pigeons swam and dolphins mm -hmm. flew you know what i mean if you're that mm -hmm. guy <laughs> yeah, but this yeah. this makes you just think okay. this just makes yeah. you think i swear to you every time i listen to that song i'm like hmm i'm relaxed you know i'm like oh are you just going to thought that's funny. Man. Pretty cool. I didn't know that um, Colorado. I didn't know that. I thought I thought uh, Des was from Texas. No, she was born in Denver, moved to Texas. Oh, she moved to Texas. Yeah, okay. she moved to Texas at a young age um, and grew up the rest of her life in Texas. Uh, but she grew up, she was raised on a you know a farm and that whole yeah. yeah. Is, is Red Rock, is that the amphitheater up on the mountain, up on uh, in Colorado? Is that Red, Red Rock? Red Rock is the... It's, yeah, that, it's, the, it's like a big amphitheater, it, right? It's outdoors. So you're sitting... Yeah, it's an outdoor. Yeah. It's an outdoor, yeah. You're sitting on... I've been there. And the, the seats are built into the, the the mountain. Yeah. Yes, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, when I went to Colorado, bro, I had a... I got... I got what, what is that called? The, the fever that you get? The uh, altitude fever? Oh, yes. Yes. Dude, I was messed up. Really? Tooth ache. I was like, yo, what the heck is wrong with me? I was I was like this. I remember we took a tour of Colorado. I was on the tour bus like this. 
Oh wow. I was dying, dog. Yes. I'm like, what's wrong with me? But the altitude got me. Yes. The freaking altitude. That's dude, why UFC crazy. fighters have to go out there like several weeks they in advance, train, a month. Right? Yeah. yeah, to train and the, you know, because the the breathing's different, the oxygen level's different. Yeah, the altitude will get you, bro. Yeah. That's funny, man. That's funny. But uh yeah, no, great show again, man. I that think, was a uh, great show. And you know that was great. And this is a great example of what we are as Cash the Craze. So if you are a musician. If you are an actor, uh, if you are a writer, an author, uh, if you are a cosplay person, whatever it is, if you're an independent trying to, you know, get out there and be successful and, and you're making it on your own terms, um, you know, this is this is the platform for you. We're just not about comic books. We're 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 the craze. And uh, so um, we've had we have an entrepreneur, we have a musician. You know, we had a director on the show. The first one was um, Vanessa Verduga. Big shout out to her. Oh, she Vanessa, was, yeah, she, she was everything. She was jack of all trades. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. she was yeah, playwright. She was she's a lawyer. She, a lawyer. She was. She did it all. She, she did, did it, it all. all. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, she she kicked so, it off. She was an actress, lawyer, producer, comp writer. Uh, then we had Jeffrey Henderson. Artist. Yeah. Yes. 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 Independent artist. Is not, it's not just like artists with a pen and, 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 you know, and you're drawing independent artists, everything, Any, anything creative that you're pushing, bring it on. Let's talk about it. Yes. Bring it on that. You know, that's who we is. Um, we are, <laughs> we are the heart of the industry. Huh? What'd you say? That's who we is. Be. No, that's, that's who we is. That's, be. that's who we be. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> oh, um, man. So what else is going? Well, this is the month of June. So what else is going on? I have a few. Well, next week. Who's on next week? We have to figure it out. I think mm-hmm. you have a whole thing set up, but you'll you'll find out. You'll... You know, it's <laughs> we'll funny. You know. What, what's what's great about this, Jorge Medina? Hey, so what's great about this is that when we first decided, when when George and I hooked up back last spring, and we decided, hey, you know, let's let's do the craze. Let's get back into the game. At that time, we're trying to say we were like, all right. We got to get guests. You gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And we were like yeah. hustling to get the guests on the show. Um, and now they're just flocking to us, which is great. So now, you know, and I think that goes back to the fact that we've been consistent. Um, our message has been consistent. We've been growing. If you looked at our first show back in September to our new show, you know, uh, how everything's improved and it's gotten better and better. Uh so, you know, I want to say thank you to everybody on Twitter uh, that has supported Cash the Craze. I want to say thank you to everybody on Instagram who support Cash the Craze. I want to say thank you to those of you on YouTube who are subscribing. Uh, we truly, truly, truly appreciate it. We cannot do this without you. It's the See, this is totally funded uh, by us. Um, so by you subscribing, by you supporting, that's the fuel, that's the energy for us. Uh, so I say thank you again. I truly appreciate you for listening. Um, uh, thank you, Serene, for being on the show today. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wish everybody success, health, prosperity. You know, do your thing, baby. Yes, yes sir. And next week, next week, we're going to have Sam Johnson from Geek Girl on the show. So check that out. Word up. Crazy Word up. up. We're rolling with the crew that go buck, buck, buck. Throw your gigs in the air. <laughs> Peace so out, this y'all. is the commercial credits. I did this already, right? Where did I put the credits? See? <laughs> credits. Crazy. 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 Yeah, he was crazy. He said, I'm the idiot. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. You are listening to Catch the Craze on Catch the Craze. You're listening to Catch the Craze. Candy girl.